again, fellow hobby geeks. Um, here we go with another round of Miniature Dork Universe. See, I said it right this time. I'm gonna skip the uh, usual bullshit banter here and get right to actually got a request. And I will do requests, actually, if I can. I mean, my whole point of doing this is to share this shit with people that we all enjoy. Um, so if you have a request and I can accommodate that request, fuck it, yeah, I'll do it. So, the request was to do or showcase um, the Peter Pig casualties and surrendering guys and um, medics. And I have pretty much all of those things, <laughs> being the enthusiastic dork that I am. So I'm going to go through and show you all this stuff. I'll, I've got a bunch of unpainted things, um, as you all might have. <laughs> and... Uh, so I'll show you the unpainted stuff first, and then I'll show you the stuff that I've painted already for my late war Germans, British, and Russians. Sorry, they're Canadians. <laughs> Not British, but it's British infantry. You know what I'm talking about. So let's get right to the shit. Just going to put down a little purple uh, backdrop so we can see this easier, and we'll get to it. Okay, we'll dive right in and start with 8th Army casualties. Um, these are all Peter Pig, by the way. Um, most of these guys are Peter Pigs. There might have been some, like, battlefronts thrown in. But what I will say is most of these Peter Pig uh, figures and casualties really blend in well with the Flames of War stuff. Like, their older metals, not their plastics. But we won't go there. If you want to go there, check out my video on... Um, you know, comparing the, the various manufacturers with, uh, you know, British Commonwealth and late war Germans. Uh, but these are mostly Peter Pig. And so here's what the 8th Army casualties look like. Um, you can see all of these on their website too, like in their, their online sort of catalog. Um, but they have the, uh, the typical 8th Army desert, you know, khaki drill gear. Um, this guy's got his shovel over his head. <laughs> like, they're great poses. I, you know, I love Peter Pig stuff. The, the equipment looks good. The packs are well modeled. Um, they're nice casualty figures. And, uh, so I use these in, in my games for usually doing, like, a, our own version of Crossfire. So a lot of changes in edits. Um, but we use these to mark like pins and suppressed. So, you know, one would be a pin, two would be a suppressed. Um, let's move on to the surrenderers. Here's a, here's a couple of the surrendering figures. Um, I put an Australian hat on it because I'm going to model my guys as uh, Australians in Tobruk, sort of in the early part of the desert campaign. Uh, and this guy, he's got a, a sling and his, uh, one hand over his head because his other arm is messed up. And yeah, I'll add too that the you can buy from Peter Pig and their they have heads and things, so you can buy like the Australian hats plus the ones with the sides turned up and the heads scale out with the rest of the figures, so that's nice. Because some of their heads are really large, which is kind of scary when you're buying them because you don't know what you're going to get. But these heads turn out well. And the entire Peter Pig, like, 8th Army range is awesome. So if you're looking for metal, like, desert figures and you can't get the Flames of War ones, um, or I would say I prefer these to the Flames of War ones. Flames of War ones are kind of nice, like the old metals. Um... But I'd say the Peter Pigs are even better. Okay. These are the, uh, the Africa Corps casualties from Peter Pig. Um, they don't have surrendering guys, unfortunately. Uh, but their, their casualties are good. Like I said, the, these Africa Corps are a little bit smaller than their 8th Army guys and a little bit smaller than some of the other metal Africa Corps manufacturers. But they're... They're pretty nice. Oh, these two guys are the same. Oops. So I got two of the same guys here. There's there's usually three different poses in a pack of eight, um, and so you'll you'll get uh, 
you know, three of one guy and two of one guy, and I think it's just random which one you get three of and which one you get two of. Um, but the again, as per Peter Pig, you know, the gear looks great. It's got all the right stuff. They have like the shorter um, boots, or sometimes they were just the long boots bloused uh, with the pants over top. But yeah, they have like the shorter foot gear. So I kind of associate these guys with a bit later on in the Desert War. But I mean, for sure, you can use them for the early period too. Um, this guy has his um, entrenching tool beside him. Uh, and all of his gear is like flopped up over by his head. So yeah, they're, they're nice casualty figures. Okay, we will move on to the next. These are the uh, Peter Pig Fallschirm Jaeger. Um, I think since they've they've got like early war Fallschirm Jaeger, they might have their own casualties. But these are their older um, Fallschirm Jaeger, which are more like late war guys. And uh, again, these these are much smaller, and that whole range of Fallschirm Jaeger are smaller than say their late war German range, which is unfortunate. Um, so these guys are quite small. Let's put them relative to, say, an 8th Army. See? Kind of looks like the guy's kid. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. But, you know, they're casualty markers, so I still use them. Um, this guy has his ammo belt. This guy's pose is a little weird. His hands are up in the air, but, you know, apparently... Poses are kind of strange. The helmet is quite small. Um, again, another good pose. And all of the gear looks appropriate for Fallschirm Jaeger. I even see like little tiny pistols because they were all armed with <laughs> pistols. So, yeah, there's your Fallschirm Jaeger. Up to you um, if you want them smaller than the rest of your guys, but I think those casualties are not too bad. These are the Italians. Um, again, unfortunately, they don't have surrendering figures. Uh, and these guys, these could be Africa uniforms or like the, the continental uniforms. Um, so they can be used for Africa or Russia. They scale out great with the 8th Army. Um, this guy's shirt's open and is, ooh, looks like there's a bit of guts exposed. Some of these Peter Big, like, casualties and especially the, the the destroyed vehicles they're kind of gory but you know what war is gory sometimes so let's not lose sight of the fact that we're making a game out of some of this awful suffering <laughs> it's a little reminder here and there this is a bit sobering so why not um but again great figures the uh the equipment of course is consistent with the italian army they look really good It'll look awesome painted up. This guy, I think, either has, I think he has the cap on, not the helmet. And the other two guys have helmets. On to the next. Okay, next we have um, sort of earlier war German, like the 39 to 43 roughly uniform that you could probably get away with. Now, Peter Pig had an older range that they got rid of and, and then re-sculpted a newer range. So, I have casualties from both. Um, so, these are the older range, and the way you know is they're larger, and I don't think you can get these. Unfortunately, the newer Peter Pig early war Germans are much smaller, putting the heads together so you can kind of see. Yeah, and so... They're beautiful figures. They have the right gear and everything. They, they have that particular Peter Pig magic to them. However, they're smaller than all the other metals, and they're definitely smaller than all the metal Soviets available. I don't know, maybe their Peter Pig uh, French infantry are smaller. I, I don't have French stuff. Um, but yeah, both both sets, the figures are nice, but the the older ones, their figures are a bit larger. And this is a Skytrex German casualty. Um, so they, they blend well together too. If you want like a, a variety of casualties. Um, I don't have all of the, I couldn't dig up all of the Skytrex ones. And this is a Peter Pig video. So I might throw in some oddballs just to show you how they look together. 
But uh, yeah, Skytrax and the old Peter Pigs, they're looking pretty good. The new guys are smaller, but again, as casualties, I'm not going to cry about it. Next up are American casualties. And again, unfortunately, there's no American surrendering guys. And I would say that the, the, the Peter Pig line of Americans is definitely smaller than, say, your Battlefront plastics and metals. Um, I like the Flames of War plastic Americans, the hard plastic. I think they're pretty good. But again, that soft plastic stuff, not my favorite. But yeah, the whole line of these Peter Pig guys is smaller than the Americans available by other. I haven't seen like the Forged in Battle, but I, you know, Forged in Battle is usually closer to like the Battlefront size. Um, but it's unfortunate that the late war British and Germans scale out nicely together and that the Americans are smaller. That being said, I do use the casualties because, well, they're the only ones we got. And, you know, I'm not going to cry if a casualty figure's a bit smaller. Um, it's more a marker. Um, maybe that's a little weird. It probably is, but, you know, to be so picky <laughs> one way and not the other, but I never tried to say I'm not fucking weird. If you haven't established that yet, then you need to watch a little bit more intently, I guess. But otherwise, from them being small, again, they're, they're, they're good. I, I wouldn't say, I have a couple of the early war, or sorry, the, the, the Peter Pig Americans, and, uh, eh, I wouldn't say they don't get me quite as chuffed as some of their other other lines but uh you know the casualties look good for casualties so there it is you decide for yourself now we're on to stuff that i've actually painted um so these are i'm not going to use my pointy stick so i don't scratch them but these are the uh late war germans these are the three that come in the, the kit, and this guy is an oddball. I know he's Peter Pig, but I'm not sure. Maybe he's one of the SS casualties. Uh, I didn't dig them up, but their SS range is smaller, too. Um, and so there's, it's not as diverse of a range as the early war Germans, and they're quite a bit smaller. But since this guy's helmet's blown off, I'm, I'm guessing he's one of the SS guys because he's got a late war uniform on. And that could be a smock, you know, the, the front of it is covered because his arm's in the way. So, he could be. Um, but yeah, again, nice figures, they've got really nice gear. I've thrown some uh, spares from the Plastic Soldier freaking half-tracks and <laughs> rifles lying beside them. And uh, this guy's shirt is open with some of his guts exposed. Uh, this guy, he might not even be dead or injured. He's covering his ears and freaking out on the ground, having a little shell shock moment. Um, yeah, but I, again, I love them and they scale out perfectly. That whole late war range and the guys with the great coats and the guy with the, the Zeltbon, um, or Zeitbon or whatever the fuck it is, they all look great together. They all scale out nicely and they also scale out nicely with some of the battlefront stuff and the late war British Commonwealth. Good times. Great, great figures. This is the, uh, from the medic set. Um, I wrongly um, labeled it as Medzanish. <laughs> I think I, I did some translator, but I think they were called Sannies or Sanitat or, or Tater, I don't know. Um, so it should be Sanny. Uh, this says Medzanish. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to peel off the label. I'm not that freaking anal retentive. But again, these figures are beautiful. Um, there's a there's a third medic that doesn't appear in this um, little thing because I'm just keeping it down to three guys. But uh, what we use medics for? Some you know some rules don't have space for medics and again we're using like crossfire and they don't but so what we've decided is that medics will help uh rally suppress troops so if you have a medic um the company will have a couple medics and stretcher bearers um they can help uh 
rally like a, a suppressed suppressed stand and um, there's some rules I kind of forget what we do around like you can't really shoot at medics I know that it happened especially between Russians and Germans and Japanese and allies um, but there is some kind of rule where your opponent has some kind of <laughs> some kind of punishment for firing at a medic you know I forget what it is now I'll have to look it up in my book but you know, it, it makes it so the medics can kind of move around the table with impunity and it's a nice way um, to help you rally suppressed troops because a game can get pretty stagnant if you can't rally, even even for, even for if you're winning, <laughs> you know, it's like, fuck, <laughs> yeah, we want to keep it moving. So it just adds a little dynamic to it because, I don't know, I've had games where you have a suppressed squad and it just you can't freaking rally the damn thing for whatever reason so it's nice it's nice you know and, and also they, they they just don't get killed either you hear other guys trying to kill them and they can't so i don't know sometimes it's nice to have ways to unstagnate a game medics help in this case at least with our rules <laughs> it's freaking guys that won't freaking and then here's your late war German surrendering. Again, great poses. The one guy has a camouflage smock on. You could use him for SS. However, the smock does have the hood. Um, I do think the SS did have some smocks with, with the hoods. Um, the army one was reversible. It went out of focus. The army one was reversible with white winter on the inside. I think the SS one I think, I could be wrong, I'm not an expert on that, but I think the SS one was reversible with um, fall or summer camel, just like the regular smock. Um, but I think the one with the hood was less ideal, or not less ideal, less common with the SS. There's a couple surrenderers and a couple more. That's the same guy um, with the smock and there's the third guy with his hands over his helmet. Again, the gear looks great. They're just really nice figures. <laughs> I love those Peter Big Late War Germans. Now we'll move on to British and Commonwealth. You know, I think here there's a couple of sky tracks thrown in. <laughs> So they, I think these two might be sky tracks, because their heads look a little bit smaller, and these two are, are Peter Pigs. But roughly, they're pretty good in scale with one another, so if you want, again, the, the diversity in, in poses, which I kind of like. I think on the table it looked cool, and there's not a bunch of repeats of poses. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I would just have to say, once again, the, the, the Peter Pig guys look great. Guys shovel this off to the side. Um, his helmet's off. Um, they have, like, the uh, the arm patches um, consistent with... Oop, guy lost some rubble. Just throw it back on there. Yeah, consistent with Commonwealth armies. So, once again... Yeah, the whole Peter Pig late war British range is great. Um, I recommend it. And while we're at it, we'll throw in the medics. And I think this is the third variant of the Peter Pig um, British uh, casualties. And of course, I've painted my guys up as Canadians, but you can see here... Um, they're pretty nice, and these are two of the Peter Pig medics. There's a third medic that's not appearing in this. Um, I couldn't find him in my... He's, he's kicking around somewhere, but... Um, I think it's another guy carrying a, a medic bag. You can look on the Peter Pig website, though, and just go to their World War II infantry and go to their medics. You'll see that third guy on there. But again, scales out consistently with everything. They got all the gear that a medic would have. So, another win. Here's some of their 
surrendering infantry. They have a bit lighter kit. Oh no, sorry, this the one guy does. Um, but that's, you know, I like that. I, I wish actually they did have some more figures. They do have a few with, with light kit. Um, but the majority of them have the full packs and shovels and heavy stuff. But when you look at photographs from, you know, Normandy or later on in Holland and Germany, you can see that they've really edited the stuff that they're carrying. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of the, the uh, extra bandoliers for uh, Lee Enfield ammo. And, you know, they're just carrying like an entrenching tool in their canteen and, you know, their Bren gun ammo packs. But, but that's about it. Or, you know, yeah, lots of those Lee Enfield bandoliers. Um, yeah. And here's the third Peter Pig surrendering pose. Um, and he's beside a, a battlefront, um, you know, injured tank crew. <laughs> We've also tailored up some rules for like bailed out tank crews and stuff. Um, but I mean, you could also use him as a, as a, uh, pin or suppressed marker. They wore very similar uniforms. I guess the tank guy has goggles around his neck. Doesn't matter though. Um, but you can see they scale out nicely together. So now we'll move on to our third and final of the painted, the painted guys. These are the Russians, which again are in late war uniforms. And I think, okay, I could be wrong. I, no, I'm not wrong. You know what? I don't have all these Russians out and I didn't dig them all out for this video. So forgive me for that. But this is a mix. So they, was it two or three years ago, Peter Pig scrapped all of their previous Russians and then re-sculpted them all. So like the Germans, um, there was an older range. I think this is from the older range. And then there's the newer range, which these guys are from, but they're all wearing like the later war uniform with the epaulets and the, the, the higher collar. Not that you can see with these dead casualties. So, you know, these guys could go for early war too, because you can't really see that. But the, the rest of their figures clearly have like the later war um, uniforms on, which you might be able to see in the casualties. Actually, or sorry, the, uh, the surrendering guys. Um, but they're very nice. So if, yeah, you can't, the, the older guys seem a bit smaller and the newer guys scale out nicely with the rest of the range. Like these guys scale out nicely with the late war Germans. So if you're doing late war stuff, Peter Pig, Russians and Germans are, are a good good uh, choice. The funny thing is, is their older range is a bit smaller. You can see that his helmet's a bit smaller than this guy. So they have it opposite, like their older Russians are smaller um, and the newer ones are bigger. And with the Germans, their older ones were a bit bigger and the newer ones are smaller. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. The, the old Russians did not have surrenderers though and the new ones do. And they're the same size. So there's two of the surrenderers. The one guy's very lightly equipped with just a canteen. Um, yeah, I suppose their arms look a little short and stubby. <laughs> they're they're kind of cartoony sculpts. Um, but they still do have that kind of Peter Pig man magic to them. I think the, the other guys were a bit more proportionate in the ranges, but uh, this guy looks a bit more realistic holding his helmet. This is the third from that pack. Again, he's uh, very lightly equipped. But it's, it's nice just to have these, you know, casualties and surrenderers, you know, to use as markers. And here is the medic. Now there's three medics, and again, I, I didn't find them to dig them up, so sorry. So 
this is a Peter Pig medic, and there's two others. The two other medics are, are male. She's a female medic. Um, one's holding a medicine bag, and the other one's kneeling or something. Um, she's paired up with a battlefront medic. I just, I thought it'd be cool to put the two female medics together. And then this is one of these generic guys um, that you can buy and just use them for whoever. You know, they've, so in my little scene here, my Soviet medics have just determined this guy is dead. They've covered him up and now they're looking for the next person to save their life. <laughs> and uh, I experiment with different labeling methods. My Russians have little corners instead of little strips. Um, yeah, I just like doing that kind of geeky stuff. I think it makes the, the bases look really cool and also easy to identify who's who. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that will be it for that little review. Hopefully that'll help you guys out when you're deciding if you want casualty figures and if it's worth buying Peter Pig. I'm not sure if the, uh, the price of... Here, I might as well throw something in the camera. Here's a, here's a freaking blown up vehicle um, with more casualties. I didn't throw in the vehicles because then this video would get way too long, but they do also have a range of vehicles and they're all pretty cool and they're all pretty bloody and gross, but again, we are doing war, so um, the vehicles are nice, uh, you know, just nice terrain pieces that you can use for cover or whatever, but we actually have a rule where if you supply your opponent with a, one of your damaged vehicles, they have to put it in line of sight of one of their hidden anti-tank weapons. So it's kind of like a a, a, a a way for you to, you can't really see the weapon, but you know, okay, in this area, there's a weapon. So maybe I'm not gonna drive one of my vehicles through there because I can expect him to end up like this guy. And then you have to use tactics to figure out how to flush out, you know, recon by fire or whatever to find that enemy anti-tank gun. Um, just a way to add a little bit more fun and realism to a game. I'm rambling again. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Stay tuned for more um, fun, loving, greasy, miniature dork universe. Bye for now.